everyone welcome back this is Mandy and I am um, if you watched one of my recent videos you saw I really like this color palette together and I mentioned in that video I wanted to do a set of coasters with the same palette because I need to restock my Etsy shop pretty bad um, so I'm gonna do that but I'm probably gonna voice over the rest for the sake of time so let me show you the colors and um, yeah so Australian salmon gum Um, and you can see the colors on my spinner because I just painted. Some of these are still slightly thin, but for coasters it should be fine. Dream Sickle from Color Art. Love this color. And I probably didn't mention it on this most recent video, but I got that color in the Master Color Library on colorart.com. And um, you can now buy all the primary elements ever made, which is pretty amazing. Um, this is another one I got from there, Purple Sage. And so when you look around in there, um, or anywhere on the Color Art website, you can also, in addition to the 20% off, you can save using my discount, which is Mandy1120. You can find Eddie the Emu, and he's so cute. And you can add him to your cart and save additional on your cart. I think it's an additional $25. Australian Red Violet. And this is a custom purple I made using Australian Red Violet and Indanthrene Blue. You could also use Indigo. Uh, Lisa Marvin actually made a pretty similar color using Anthraquinone Blue from Golden. I use and whatever that is called as a cell activator from M. Graham, and I cannot pronounce it for anything, but hers was really pretty too. So I'm going to use my bubbly pillow paint that I have left instead of the other one that's not giving me quite as much trouble. Oh yeah. All right. So, and even though I am practicing, yikes, that's a lot of paint. Even though I'm practicing blowing things out myself, um, well, it doesn't really apply to coasters. My little mini blower works great on coasters if it ain't broke. You know, um, I'm not. I'm not doing all that. I use the mini blower for coasters, so I know that might seem like a giant contradiction, but. All right, so we've got the salmon gum. We have the dreamsicle as our second layer. Super beautiful colors, and. Beautiful purple sage, Australian red violet, and then my custom purple, uh, which if you didn't see the previous videos, is a combination of Australian red violet and indanthrene blue. Um, the indanthrene blue is from Holbein. That is a color combination um, I originally learned from think Mitchell Grimma told me about it um but he suggested mixing Matisse Indigo with Australian Red Violet well Matisse Indigo is very expensive so I tried with Indanthrene Blue instead hoping to keep my Matisse Indigo separate and it worked great so that is black cell activator so that's Amsterdam Lamp Black uh, with Australian Floetrol, and this is Titanium White from M. Graham with Australian Floetrol. I did use a little too much, um, but oh well. So now we're going to blow it out with the little leaf blower. I also think a set of these would be cool with a black and bronze or copper cell activator. So, you know, you may see more of these colors going forward. So just obviously use too much cell activator, so I'm just breaking the surface tension in some of those places and trying to keep it from kind of pooling. My colors are a little thin here, but um, these still turn out to be really nice. So just popping a couple crazy bubbles while we let the center develop. Still breaking some of the surface tension here. I tell you, with this technique, half the battle is like kind of getting your ratios right and getting used to the right amount of paint, cell activator, etc. 
um, a lot of those things can really affect the result. So, so I'm using a turkey baster there just to gently break the surface tension and let those cells come through. And then we'll spin her out. I did um, speed this up because coasters can be kind of a tedious process sometimes. Sorry if you can hear my dog snoring. Okay. And I was using some pillow paint that had some bubbles in it, so unfortunately I had to deal with those bubbles. Obviously the center is kind of over there in the corner, but um, I don't know why. Sometimes with coasters, even though it seems like my center is level and everything is where it's supposed to be, sometimes that just happens, so you just kind of have to go with it. All right, let me try to show you up close. It's pretty. A little blurry for you, sorry. All right, let's get the next one done. We've got our pillow paint down, the Australian salmon gum from Matisse. Next up is Dreamsicle. Naturally, we have some stupid bubbles. All right, Dreamsicle is next. Um, and just in case you didn't see the previous video, um, both Dreamsicle and Purple Sage are primary elements from Color Art. I do have a discount code for you in the description box below for color art to save 20% off with Mandy1120. And I got both of those on the Master Color Library. So you can actually buy any primary elements created in the Master Color Library. So it's a great way to see which beautiful colors you might be missing. Sorry if you can hear our dishwasher. It just started a minute ago. All right, black cell activator and white cell activator coming up next. You see how everything's kind of moving to one side a little bit? I do have the world's smallest blower in my Amazon shop. The link is below. Um, I do get a lot of questions about it. It is really helpful when you're learning to do blooms and you're doing coasters and stuff and I do get questions from viewers about how, like, how to use it for blooms and um, I know I um, it's hard to explain it when you're going around the tile because you have to move quick but you kind of want to go one direction and then just kind of piggyback on the very edge of that little petal you've blown out and blow the next section kind of scooping a little bit more from the middle um, that helps ensure that you're maximizing the cell activator you put down, but um, also not leaving too much in the center. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that helps anyone. It's hard to describe it when you're not actively trying to do it, but just breaking the surface tension there in the middle. Um, I have had some challenges with the black and white cell activator together because my white one seems to be about the right consistency and the black one is getting kind of old and so it's a little bit thicker. So this may not be the greatest representation of what that should look like if they were the same consistency and you know it was kind of centered a little bit better they'd probably look a little bit nicer. But we do what we can you know. I, I want to use up cell activator I don't want to just mix it up and have it sit there and go bad. Not bad but less effective you know. So you can probably get a little bit more out of it with a smaller circle, like a coaster. So here's what this one looks like up close. The top right corner is my favorite. And here we go again. All right, so we've got our pillow paint down. And I am trying to do a lot better about sharing these resin results with you guys when I get them done. Um, I don't know if the rest of you who are artists are like me, but it feels like my to finish stack is forever piling up. Sometimes, you know, you just only have so much time to do things. So 
All right, Dream Sickle over the Salmon Gum. Next up is Purple Sage. And I am probably going to try that idea with the black and the bronze cell activator. Because um, I have these colors already mixed up and I want to do better about using colors in some variation until they're used up instead of perpetually having 50,000 colors mixed up at once and not getting used. It's so hard to paint often enough to use everything up. Um, but it's to me it's a lot of fun to see how you can slightly modify the same colors and get such a different result, you know, using just white cell activator or just black or black and white or black on the bottom, white on the top versus white on the bottom, black on the top. Like all those things are so interesting to me. So, so yeah. Um, again, the whole design keeps going to one corner. Super irritating. I don't know if it's I don't remember if I have my puppy pool out for these or not. I don't think I did. So there's really nothing underneath the spinner that should cause that to happen. So whatever. It is what it is, right? All right. So let's blow this bad boy out. And then... That one spot right there on the bottom corner, I didn't do the greatest job on, and I'm trying to fix it here. Yeah, no deal there, but I just love the little, the little cells around the edges. I think those are so cool looking. All right, and I'm just picking up some of that spin-off paint to cover the corners so that the paint easily covers the corners without having to like hyper stretch the design to get there. I think of the set so far, this is the best looking of the coasters, it has the best composition, the most even cells and lacing. So let's spin it out, see how it goes. Like the design is still off center, no matter what I did with these for some dumb reason, but that, to me that's not too big of a deal. Because I think with fluid art, you have to give up expecting things to be symmetrical and centered all the time. That's just not how life works in fluid art land. So, really beautiful. Love those colors together. Just amazing. Here it is. A little bit slower close up for you. You can really see the shimmer up close. Really, really, really pretty. The colors just play so nicely together. All right, here we go. All right, we got the pillow paint down, the salmon gum. It's crazy how much I just love using this color now after I didn't use it for such a long time. And I've always liked the color. You know, it's just weird. It's weird how we do things sometimes. Dreamsicle, Purple Sage is next. I love that color. Purple Sage um, is still too thin at the time that I did this video. I have since thickened it up a little bit, but. An Australian Red Violet. To me, like the Australian Red Violet and that custom purple are just like the perfect two paint colors for this. To go, I say tube paint, they're they're mostly fluid acrylics, but you know what I mean, like regular paint. I just love them. And I love purple anyway, but I love the warmth of that custom purple. I don't know what I'm doing here. Trying to fix the lighting issue, I guess. Who knows? Pop in a couple really ridiculous bubbles. And then our cell activator. It 
it's so cool to see the cells develop as you kind of, ooh, I messed that one up real bad right there, as you glide the cell activator across. It's just so neat to see them form, especially because this is sped up about twice as fast. So it's neat to see them just kind of develop the way they do. Obviously still have a lot of cell activator in the middle here, so trying to just break it up a little bit. The important thing when you do that is to not overdo it and to not blow too hard because you want to break the surface tension, but you don't want to blow so hard that you create problems. And I have done both. So I've blown too hard where the stuff that comes through is like fuzzy and weird looking or you blow right through the pillow. Um, so just want to make that known in case you're like, what are you doing? And so far, I like the composition of this one pretty well, too, except for that one part where I messed up. But by the time it spins out, it probably won't be that noticeable. The colors are amazing. These did dry a little squigglier in some places, which tells me that one of two things. Either I had too much cell activator left on the surface and because it's a little thinner than the rest of your paint that can cause some issues it could also mean that it wasn't perfectly flat and level as it was drying which i prop them up on k cups so if the table underneath was not perfectly flat that's a possibility you know um it can also be that one or more of my paint layers was too thin impacting the stability of the paint as it dried so it is most likely that one of my paint layers was too thin, which is probably the purple sage, and or the fact that I had too much cell activator in the center there. But they're still pretty, and I'll still resin them. So here is our final close-up. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know you're here. Um, don't forget about the description box, and I appreciate everyone's support. Bye.